what's happening now. As always, kids, don't touch that dial. All of a sudden, it's just, you know, the 91 tour, grunge was coming in. You know, we were accustomed to filling 18,000 seat arenas every tour. And uh, all of a sudden, you know, I'm looking out from the stage and I'm going like, fuck, dude, what? It's like the 8,000, half a house, half a house in an arena doesn't look good. It's very embarrassing no. from the stage. I even think from the fans' perspective. We had Michael Shanker on that tour. That was a trip, you know, because I was very into UFO from like, 75 is when I got turned on to them. Wow. But at the same time, I got turned on to Kiss. Now, Kiss and Aerosmith came to, came to me around summer of 74. Would you speak, would Robin and you talk when when he left the band? Did, did you guys have a talk? Oh, I want to yes. come back. There's several, and it's in my, I, I detail this stuff, and I have a, have a book called Bobby Blotzer Tales, T-A-L-E-S, Tales of a Rat. Things you shouldn't know. I threw that in there figuring people would be like, I need to know what I shouldn't know. So probably helped me sell a couple yeah. of copies extra. But I talk about it in there because, yeah, we did keep in touch. And I brought him out on this jam thing I was doing with these guys from Northern California. It didn't go well. You know, he disappeared one day up in Sacramento. We couldn't find him and literally walks in 10 minutes before we go on stage. And, you know, he'd been doing some bad stuff, you know, with whatever he was doing. And I said, you can't go on stage like this, dude. No way. And I I let him come up there, you know. And when I say I let him, you know, I had put this thing together. And I felt like he begged me to go. I go, come on, man. Let me go. I go, all right. This is in 94. And... He just he couldn't play, and that was heartbreaking, you know. And uh, I was I, I didn't see him for a while from then. Would get phone calls together, but then when he was sick, you know, I was visiting him pretty frequently. Then it was heartbreaking, man. It it sucked. So God rest his soul. You know what? He was a great man. He was treated people very very well. Him and I were in sync business wise in this band. I think. We were the only ones that didn't really do business on an ego-driven level. And when he left, man, it was hard to get that business done like in that manner because yeah. Warren and Steven, they do business completely different. You know, They're not quite business-minded as they should be with all the history, but it is what it is. You know? It is what it is. I mean, here, you guys got the chemistry. You had a great band the atlantic years 84 90 i mean i saw bon jovi open up for you guys it's incredible legacy you guys have nobody could ever take that away i'm going to ask you the, the truth now you know you, here's a here's a brother who passed away you know did you get to finally say i love you robin like, oh you, yeah absolutely no. um i yeah. took my last visit to him was on christmas eve um in 2001 I think it was Christmas Eve. But I took Michael and Marcus, my sons, in there, and he was so stoked to see them. You know, he knew them since they were, you know, you know, that was that was that was, it. That was their uncle. He, you know, they, he was they were the, his nephews, and um, you know, he had gotten out a few months later, and I heard what was going on. But I can tell you this: the uh, the night when I found out that he had AIDS, okay? Um, he was sick. I was at a place called FM Station. Do you remember where that was? I remember it very well, Lancashire, yeah. Yeah, Lancashire, exactly. So I'm watching some bands play. I'm from the South Bay, Redondo, so it's kind of a hike getting on out there. It was, but I was there seeing something I don't recall. And it's all packed. I'm standing there listening to music, and then all of a sudden I hear this voice in my ear He's all, hey, man, what are you thinking about Robin? And I'm all, I turn around like, and it's Jamie St. James, the singer of Black and Blue. And I look at him, I'm like, it's all loud. I'm like, what about Robin? I'm yelling in his ear. He's all, he's got, I heard he's got AIDS. And I was like, what? 
I was instantly like, see you later, and on a phone trying to, you know, figure out what the, what was going on. That was my first taste of that, you know, and then I totally recall when I found out that he was gone. I was getting a haircut. Phone rang and it was Warren. He's all, he's gone. And I was like, fuck, you know, that sucks. That's... We're all going there, you know, it's just a matter of who takes care of themselves and extends it. And that's my theory, you know, and I'm always trying to be healthy and I want to make it last and that's it. That's know? it. I mean, look, life is short as we see it. Okay. And I know everybody goes, a rat re- what about rat reunion? They all ask this questions, but <laughs> you know, you got this box set and I know fans would love to see rat do and support this. Do you, li- okay. you keep in touch with Steven? Do you listen to his, the music that he's putting out? I'm about to start laughing because I had done an interview or I did an interview. I should say, three weeks ago. And I said to this question with with my friend, Troy Patrick Farrell, he's got some podcasts as well. And he goes right in, man, and starts asking me this stuff. Hey, what about Motley? What about, you know, he's all, I mean, it wasn't even like, hey, dude, how you doing, man? What's happening? You know, I guess we do that on a regular phone call. But in any case, the, but the question, the answer to that question is this. I had said, me and Steven are on the phone all the time. We're trying to orchestrate this reunion. Two years now. And I just saw an interview with him. I wasn't, I, I sent him a text. I go, dude, what the, you're throwing me under the bus. What is wrong with you, right? And he, because they were asking him, what do you think about Bobby saying that rat crushes Motley? I mean, what I said on that as the question went, said, you know, from Troy, he said, you know, I was talking to Eddie Truck, and he was like, telling me he thought that Rat's catalog blows Marley Cruz away. And and I said, it does, in my opinion. And I'm sure Marley says the same shit about us, but I, I respect them, uh, you know, to a certain degree. You know what I mean? I definitely respect, respect their career. You, how can you not, right? Absolutely. So that was blown out of proportion. And then Steven did an interview, and he was like, yeah, Bob's out there trying to talk about a reunion. Good luck. And I'm like, man, I was just on the phone with you two days ago trying to figure out where how much movement we made in the last two months, you know? It was like a, so I want a reunion. We want a reunion. Warren, I understand, wants to take a, a meeting. That's all I can say about it. If it happens, it, it happens. If not, I, I, I don't need a job. I'm fine, you know what I mean? So I'd like to rock some more, but I, with the help of next year being the 40th anniversary of Out of the Cellar, perhaps we can do something. I was talking to people over at Warner Music, BMG, on how we could do a special reissue of Out of the Cellar. And we were kicking around some ideas, and I said, hey, you guys, maybe you help reboot the, the band going out and doing a reunion. So I don't know, folks, you know, contact Warren Martini, Juan Crucier. Juan and Steven aren't best of friends right now, even though they have control of the name. It's, uh, you know, it's still, as always, it's, it's a fight. It's a shambles. But when we do it, if we get in a room, it's going to be like funny, fun, Let's go. People got to understand how much fun we had and not how much grief we had in the band, you know? As a fan of the band, it would be incredible to see a reunion and you guys to hit the stage together. And I'm just saying that as a okay, fan. Okay, hold, hold on. Here's all right. Like, I have so many friends, right? You know, and everybody has. They have the same perspective. I can't, it's just like, you know, you meet on stage, you do this and that. And, and it's, I go, you know what? You're right. It's fucking easy, okay? Here's the problem. There's not reasonable people in this bunch. This guy here is reasonable. I'm about business. You know what I mean? The, the litigation that we suffered through for eight years that cost me a million bucks. Thank you, lawyers. Um, and, and 
trust me, I have PTSD from that. That was so intense, but I, it's over. Every, it's all, all debts are settled. Okay, let's go. My perspective is, okay, Japan and America had the, that terrible war. The war ended shortly thereafter. We rebuilt them over there and we sell their cars over here. We did, you remember all that in the 60s and 70s, all yeah. the Japanese imports and then they started making them here. My, my point is, and it might be a funky one, I'm sorry, but if, if things like that can restructure and reaffirm their you know, friendship, why can't rap? Why do we have to be the oddballs? I don't, I don't get it, it ain't me. I don't even want to talk. I mean, honestly, it, it's so upsetting to me that that people just can't even put their guard down and have a conversation. We have business to conduct. Our catalog is a lucrative, large, global, worldwide selling business entity that needs respect. It needs attention. It needs to be manipulated. You know what I mean? And these, these cats, dude, they just... I don't, I just can't understand it. But if we would get together, I think we could dust off, you know, what isn't allowing them to do the right thing. Well, or it comes down to fucking marriage is over. Fuck you. I'm out. Okay. So, well, that's, it'd be that's great. All I got to say on that. Okay. Well, I'm going to, before we get out of here, the box set is out. It's yeah. put links down below. You could pre order it now. Limited edition. See, dancing on the cover, reach for the sky. I mean, you got it all there. Everything, all the Atlantic gears, all there with much, much. It's more. Mr. Bobby Blotz. And if you want to see more of this episode, you could check that out in our VIP all access backstage pass in Patreon. In the meantime, do me a favor, put your comments down below. Always love to hear what you have to say. And make sure you subscribe, hit the bell to be notified. See you all later.